when it rains, it pours. And right now, it's definitely raining on Virginia Tech. They've had a tough run of luck, which continues. It's just been announced that Kenny Brooks is looking to leave or is going to leave Virginia Tech for the University of Kentucky. In this video, we're going to take a look at that move and potentially who might replace him at Virginia Tech. Before we start, if you like the content, then please consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. All right, let's get into this. So as I mentioned, Virginia Tech has had a tough run of luck. First, they had the Elizabeth Kitley injury right before the end of the regular season, which gave them minimal time to prepare their game plan and how they play and build chemistry, which ultimately resulted in them being eliminated in the second round by Baylor, which was disappointing in terms of their preseason hopes and expectations, but an understandable result in terms of they lost Kitley just prior to the tournament. And I think most would say they played valiantly against Baylor when they were clearly undermanned in terms of they lost their most experienced and arguably their best player on their team. There were rumors and speculation the week before that Brooks was on his way to Kentucky as they had fired their coach, Kyra Elza, who had been at Kentucky for four years. She had initial success making the tournament twice, but then they have struggled mightily in SEC conference play, only having six wins in the last two years all up combined. And Kentucky was obviously interested in Brooks because he's done a heck of a job rebuilding Virginia Tech as they had not had any success in recent years with that program and then he basically came in and built it from the ground up recruiting the right players and it was a slow steady build which obviously culminated in the final four run last season it was very telling after the loss to baylor both kenny brooks and georgia amor were extremely emotional if you watch kenny brooks in interviews and just the way it seems like he interacts with his players. It's hard not to be a fan of his as he just has a, a cool, calm demeanor. And it appears from the outside that he really cares for his players and his players really buy into what he is selling and they enjoy playing for him. In the press conference after the Georgia game, Amor was talking about how her mind is almost one with Kenny Brooks's now and how how much she he has developed her game and how appreciative she was of everything that he had done for her and how he would always be a part of her life and, and give her guidance, essentially. And, well, Georgia Amor is one of the final questions that remains. Is that the last or the other shoe to drop? If you like, what is she going to do as... She has not said anything yet, and she has a few options. One is she could declare for the WNBA draft. The other one is she could choose to return to college basketball. And there are options among that. Would she follow Kenny Brooks to Kentucky via the transfer portal as a fifth-year senior? Or the other option, obviously, is to remain at Virginia Tech and play for their new coach. Now, I've previously said in another video, I thought it was unlikely that she would return for a fifth year as these fifth year players. Uh, well, it's not only that she's fifth year, it's that she's an international player. They're not eligible to earn any NIL money. She's had her four year experience. I think she would probably want to go. But like Georgia Amor knows, I, I guess the other thing that sticks out to me is just the risk of injury if you're an international player, because if if she would have done her knee like Elizabeth Kitley, she would have had her surgery at obviously Virginia Tech with their doctors and things like that. But then she has a year of rehab where she can't play or make any income or anything like that. She would essentially have to come to Australia and do come back to Australia where she lives and do her physiotherapy and rehab on her own. So I wonder if the Elizabeth Kitley injury does play on her mind. I, I don't know if she is really a good chance to stick on a WNBA roster. It's just a hard deal to make a WNBA roster as a point guard. But there, there are other options as well because you can make a good income playing overseas. You can play in Italy or China, a whole bunch of places you can do that for. And as well, she can come back to Australia in December and through the 
the Australian summer and play for the WNBL, which is the Australian Women's Basketball League. So I think it's pretty unclear what she is going to do in the future. But you can be sure the new coach is going to try to sell her hard on coming back to Virginia Tech. Now, the rumors are the leading candidate to replace Brooks is Lindsay Edmonds, who coaches Rice now. She just had a good showing when Rice played LSU. I think most people would say that she coached a very good game and gave LSU a nice little run early on in that game before LSU, well, the entire game until LSU wore them down towards the end of that game. It would seem like a good fit as she played at Appalachian State. She was also an assistant under Kenny Brooks at James Madison and then was an assistant at under Wes Moore at NC State. She obviously did well at Rice going 14 and 13 her first season, then 23 and 9, and then 19 and 5 this year. They won the AAC tournament, which gave them the tournament bid. And then, as I said before, they had a nice showing against LSU in the tournament. I thought she put together a smart game plan. Her plan of sort of slowing down LSU in the transition game by sort of getting pokey fouls in the backcourt and stuff like that. I I thought it was well executed. The only thing I didn't like, I thought at the end of the game, they let LSU like run the clock down and then foul. They wound up fouling them. So they let them dribble it for about 15 or 20 seconds. And then they fouled the ball handler. And it was like, why not, why not foul them straight away? So it was a little bit of miscommunication, but that, that happens obviously. Like I think Brooks was asked about when they let the point guard get away and run so much time in their games. Like, yeah, they were, we were telling them not to switch the players on picks and they couldn't hear it because of the noise. So, you know, it, it seems like she's would be a good replacement for Brooks. Now, other candidates being considered are Sean O'Regan, who is the current James Madison coach. In addition, Brittany Anderson, the Illinois assistant, who might be a good fit as she played and coached at Virginia Tech. It's been reported that Kenny Brooks' assistant coaches are going to join him at Kentucky. And that will be the other question. How much of his recruiting class is he able to switch over to Kentucky? As the current Virginia Tech class for 24-25 is currently rated number eight on ESPN, has Lexi Blue, Maya Hazelton, and Clara Silva. So you would expect that Virginia Tech would name a coach soon just to avoid players leaving in droves. Overall, it's sort of disappointing. You would have hoped he would have stayed, but understand you've got to do what's best for your family. I crushed James Wade when he left Chicago, but I was more, I thought that was worse because he left during the middle of the season. That was the thing as well. He traded off their draft picks. That's why I crushed James Wade. He traded their draft picks and then just up stakes during the middle of the season, which I thought was a bad look. But in this case, no, that's, this is what the game is. Players leave, coaches leave. No loyalty as well. No loyalty from the schools. Like Elza will tell you, I only got four years. Why not give me one more year of a chance? So that's that's the way it is. The only thing I'd like to know is if, if Virginia Tech had the ability to match the Kentucky offer or not and what down with that. I'm not sure if that'll be leaked out or not, but that would be interesting to see if he gave them the chance to match and if they declined to do so. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Good night.